So, welcome all of you in the last class we started discussing about a steady state NOE experiment a one dimensional NOE experiment where you can acquire the data very fast because one dimensional is faster than two dimensional experiment you do not have to spend much time especially if your molecules are not too big small molecules and you want to get specific information you do not need to spend time large, large amount of time by doing a two dimensional experiment on the other hand if the molecules are simple and if you know the assignment you can make selectively you know you irradiate a particular peak saturate a particular peak and then get the NOE information by using difference NOE steady state NOE. In fact, this is what I showed some examples how we can use it in a simple molecules small molecules especially for assignment of the particular substitution present in the my this thing. So, few examples we saw, uh, took last time in fact, in the case of uh, pyridine substitution when the uh, bar of positions we have R and R prime one is the ethyl group other the methyl group which is ethyl group which is methyl group we wanted to find out we could do that. And then we took some isomers of molecule like thujone alpha and beta isomers we know whether it is endo or exo if we know yeah, one of the protons which is endo if we hit it I know which proton which is close to it in alpha alpha isomer which proton is close in spatial proximity to uh, the H 6 endo then it is a beta isomer I know which is the iso uh, alpha isomer or beta isomer based on this close spatial proximity and that NOE gets enhanced when I hit H 6 endo we saw that you are able to distinguish two isomers alpha and beta to zone and naphthalene substitution ring also we observed and we see how we can do in the case of naphthalene substituted ring when there is CH 2 Cl and other case CH 3 C based on the NOE enhancement and same phenyl ring or a different phenyl ring along with NOE for a CH 3 group present in the substituent. We could identify pinpoint out and say the substituent both the substituents are in the ortho to each other not only that they are on the same side of the one of the phenyl rings and where it is we could easily fix it. So, this is isomers two possible isomers were there we could do that. So, like this varieties of isomers uh, possibilities we could find out and we can rule out what is important what is uh, what is not important and get only particular structure. We did that even for one of the isomers we, we had six isomers possible in the fluorine substituted molecule and then we wanted to know which is the correct isomer then you know, by NOE we could eliminate few of the things and finally you know pinpoint and say only possible structure is this because of the co correlations we could see. So, like that we have several examples in this class I will take another one or two examples of that 1D NOE where bit more important thing to especially for the assignment purpose of the peaks also. So, and also we took example for assignment of a particular peak in a 5 membered ring, but we will show in this naphthalene in the substituted molecule how we can you know remove, remove the ambiguity of the assignments. For example, I will start with this molecule here it is a 2 naphthalene it is OH is here ok. Now, th in this molecule there are two diff spin systems one is 3 protons here is H 1 H 3 H 4 other is 4 protons H 5 6 7 8 there are two spin systems. And of course, 1 D spe spectrum I am not going to show that I know you people will be knowing by that otherwise also you can see from here ok. For example, OH peak is not shown and this is H 1 proton I will say this, this proton experience only meta coupling and one para coupling that is all it is very small splitting meta coupling of 1, 1 to 1 1.5 para coupling is 0.5 hertz if it is not resolved we we'll get only a doublet small doublet that is I would say possibly H 1 and then start with that and then say next is B of course, uh, next is H 3 H 3 is this one why it is H 3 I will say this is H 3 because this experiences one ortho coupling and one meta coupling this is doublet of doublet ok I can identify this one and you go further you can complete the square and you can identify other proton also that is H 4. So, all the three protons we can assign this one and of course, there is a overlap here this H 4 has to be a doublet 
and paracoupling if it is not seen you can see here it is a doublet of course one of the component of the doublet is overlapped there as a consequence you will not see clear doublet but it is looks like a triplet but other doublet is from the different proton. So, this is how we can assign all the three protons of this failure group. Of course, remaining other protons are here we can start assigning from there or oh, see oh, easily we can start going I would say one of the proton is here 5 Look, looking at the multiplicity pattern is a doublet this is that is a large double that too this could be at ortho proton coupling and a meta coupling is partially resolved with that idea I would say this is H5 I do not know it could be H8 also I will start assuming that is H5 then complete the square and I will say correlated peak this is H6 complete the square then I will say H7 from H6 then I will go further and I will complete the square I will make the complete assignment and H8 ok. Now, I could make the assignment based on the cross correlated peaks from the Cauchy spectrum very easily I could see that here start assuming that one is H5 uh, what guaranteed is H5 why not H8 that is all H8 also should have a similar pattern similarly H7 H6 should have a identical pattern even in this final ring interestingly this will also doublet of doublet of doublet identical pattern here also and these two will also have identical pattern. Now, if I started with this assumption H5 I am not sure whether H5 or H or H8. So, there is an ambiguity here spin sheet assignment could be H6, H6, H8, H7 or, alter, or alternately that is also possible. So, in which case how to resolve the ambiguity we can result to selective NOE experiment here that is the steady state NOE experiment we can do that. For example, C8 and H8 if you consider they are parallel to this bond C1 H1. So, if I ir irradiate this there is a possibility you will get the NOE here ok uh, that is a possibility and similarly if you consider H4 H5 is close to H5 C5 ok these are all uh, but of course these two are far away from H8 of course if I hit this you cannot get the NOE for this if I hit this you cannot get NOE for this H4 is close to H5 and not to H8 this is basically looking at the structure you know. So, with this idea we will start doing the selective NOE selective NOE what we will do one of the peak I know is for in this my ring I have already assigned let us say I am hit, hitting this proton ok selective irradiation of proton H1 is this one. If I hit that proton where do you export the NOE this is a one dimensional spectrum not conventional spectrum when you take the hit that one take the difference you see there is some enhancement here on this proton what is that proton that proton if I hit this one if this is enhancement is here it cannot be this proton because from the multiplicity pattern I know it is a doublet. So, it cannot be this one it, this cannot be H5 because H1 is when I selectively irradiate I am getting enhancement it must be H8 on a phenyl proton that must be H8. So, I can assign that easily assignment problem is solved ambiguity is resolved I do not know whether I stood I have to start with this as H5 or H8 now I know it is H8 and I to confirm that I will irradiate H8 then where do you get the enhancement you will see on the this one H1 and other ring other this H1 proton of the other phenyl ring it clearly confirms this H8 for me and also there is enhancement for the neighboring proton from H8 this one then you know what is this one this is H7 assignment problem became simple you can now rule out why ambiguity that is what we do and then selective NOE experiment confirms assignment what is the assignment what was wrong what was confusing ambiguity was there now I can say this is the possibility H5 H7 H6 you go in systematically in the left right in the frequency particular frequency order then I will know this proton is here this is next here next in the increasing frequency or uh, increasing uh, delta high, high field. We can go for the confirmation of another molecule you understood now how we can utilize the selective NOE to make the unambiguous assignment for protons in the molecule like phenyl rings. We can go for the uh, next one confirmation of one methaxinaphthalene in CDCL3 here we use Cauchy x for identifying the peaks similar peak here OCA3 is here CHO is here again 
two protons which are r thought each other. Of course, we analyze this molecule remember we analyze where it should be and everything we, uh, one of the pro proton spectrum we analyze this one. This is a identifiable spin system this has to be from this group then obviously this is proton 2 or 3 fine. Then remaining 4 protons are here this is double of a double a double of a double a 2 triplet egg pattern 2 triplet egg pattern has to come from here and other 2 from this. So, uh, assignment can be made by using cosy fine and of course OCA3 is there CHO is there they are not shown they are far away that is not of important right now and there are 2 possible ways of assigning the doublet triplet triplet doublet ok this could be H8 H5 or this could be H7 H6 similar like what we saw in the previous example. How do we do that we can resort to 1D or also do a 2D this is a simple molecule there is no need of a 2D but still if you do the 2D what we see is here what happens and we are going to see OCA3 gives a cross picked proton doublet at 6.87 this one this has to be CA3 OCA3 is given to this doublet this has to be H3. We can make the assignment for peak coming at 6.87 for H3 protons further we can see CHO shows correlation to proton at 7.88 here this CHO is here this should be this is giving correlation to proton at 7 point this is the doublet we know doublet of a doublet this has to be H2. So, H2 and H3 we can start making the assignment already and of course, CHO also shows correlation to proton doublet another one at 9.2 and this is assigned to H8 because this is the only possible close spatial proximity it cannot be anything else. So, we can assign this peak which is coming here as H8 then you can rule out the possibilities this ambiguity will not be there now. So, we can make the assignment very clearly like this which proton is which with another interesting part is this one look at this molecule this is a molecule called geraniol it is a 1D spectrum they are all expanded here for example, if you look at this proton this one one this is a doublet because of this and a quartet because of a long range coupling doublet of a quartet similarly all these things can be assigned. Now, the question for us is what is the confirmation of this geraniol what is the confirmation of this molecule for that we can make the assignment for using the cosy all the peaks have been assigned there is no question everything has been clearly assigned systematically we know which is one and then I showed you it should be a doublet of a quartet from that we started assigning for all the peaks everything can be clearly assigned here using the cosy start with one I told you so one is a very clear ambiguously I, I I know that from 1 you can go to 2 from 2 you can go to other things very see from 1 you came to 2 then we can go to 10 then 7 from 10 you can go to 4 and then also for you can go to other things very easily 4 to 5 5 to 6 6 to 7 like that. Of course, we can also identify how many protons are there how many CH3 are there CH2 and CH3 is there by using depth 90 depth 135. This experiment confirms there are 3 CH3s remember depth experiment I told you it confirms there are 3 CH3s and 2 CHS are here and CH2s are uh, negative 3 CH2s and 2 CHS and of course, there are 2 quaternaries which have no effect. So, from then you can see from the normal spectrum you can identify the types of protons CH3 CH2 because this, uh, this is a simple molecule we can make all the assignments of protonated carbons and uh, distinguish correct chemical shift of proton 8 and 9 everything by using inadequate I assume that I have done everything that is not important assignment can be done I have already told you how to do that by combining varieties of NMR experiments 1D 2D COSI HMQC HMBC etc. Quickly I went through assuming that you know how to do the co assignment using COSI HSQC HMBC of course, methyl editate will identify the protons and then uh, depth 135 also you can do and I can I could identify all this here uh, protonated carbons and then uh, odd protonated uh, even protonated carbons everything. Now, my question is what is the real confirmation of the molecule how do we can find out the real confirmation of this molecule first we can do selective in OE for this molecule how do you do that we will irradiate this proton I am confident of that because I knew where it comes I will irradiate proton 
and then there is no NOE and proton 10. On the other hand, I am sorry, uh, there is NOE, there is NOE and proton 10. This is proton 10. If you irradiate this, there is a NOE here. And to confirm that, you irradiate 2. When you irradiate 2 here, there is no NOE and H1. They are not on the same side. That is what the conclusion is. If we, they were on the same side, irradiated 2 would have given the NOE for this. When I irradiate 2, there is no NOE and H1. Whereas, irradiate H1, there is NOE and proton 10 because that means 10 and this one are on the same side. Okay, that is fine. Go to the next one. Irradiate 8 here. There is no NOE on this proton 6. There is single proton here. There is no NOE and proton 6. On the other hand, irradiate 9 or 10 because they are close by both you have to irradiate simultaneously. Then you are going to see NOE and proton 6. That is interesting. Here if you irradiate there is no NOE on this, but if you irradiate this you have a NOE here. What does it mean? Proton 6 and 9 are on the same side of the double bond. You can confirm that. You irradiate 6, you get the pro NOE and the proton 9. That shows the proton this H6 and H9 are cis to each other. They are on the same side of the double bond. So, if the NOE difference if you from this uh, geranial molecule, what is the conclusion we can draw? NOE and H10 when H1 is irradiated, there is no NOE or some weak weight you can see on H1 when H2 is irradiated. That means, confirms H, H10 and H2 are on the same side. Okay. Another thing no NOE and H6 when H8 is irradiated and NOE and H6 when this is irradiated. H9, NOE in H9, of course, when the reverse way, when H6 is irradiated. This confirms H6 in H9 are cis to each other and H8 in H6 are trans to each other. You can get the geometry of this molecule. Correct confirmation of geranial from NOE experiment, difference NOE experiment is this. Because these two are trans to each other, these two are cis to each other and this and this are on the same side of the, the same side of the double bond. There is an isomer of this molecule interestingly that is called neral, other one is called geranial, this is neural. See, this is the isomer of this. What is the structure of this one? Can we get the NOE uh, without going into assignments and everything quickly? Same I will irradiate proton 1 here. No NOE and H10 interestingly. Remember in the previous geranial, they when we irradiated again the 1 was there was NOE and 10, but here there is no NOE. And the other isomer of this molecule. Irradiate 2, there is NOE and H10, very good NOE, you see. H10, there is NOE. What does it confirm? This 2 and 10 are on the same side of the double bond. That confirms. Come here, NOE, irradiate proton 9, like similar case, proton 9, there is NOE and H6, this one. And irradiate 6, NOE and H9, the converse is also true. That means, H6 and H9 are on the same side of the double bond. If they are trans to each other, like we saw in previous many examples, there would not have been any NOE. So, that means, these are on the same side of the double bond, cis. And at the same time, if I irradiate proton 10, there is no NOE and proton 2. That is another interesting thing. If I irradiate here, there is no NOE here. Okay, I am sorry. So, what from this what you can conclude is NOE difference spectrum NOE in H10 when H2 is irradiated, NOE in H2 when H10 is irradiated confirms they are cis to each other 10 and 2, proton 2 and proton 10 are cis to each other. In the other guy, NOE cross peaks you see NOE in H10 when H6 is irradiated. NOE and H6, when H9 is irradiated, they are cis to each other again. So, H confirms H6 and H9 are cis to each other and H8 and H6 are trans to each other. Two isomers of the same molecule. How we can get the structural information very easily? Just by doing 1D difference NOE. You got the point now. How we could do 1D difference NOE? I think we have given lot of examples, lot of things we have discussed. There is no point in discussing further with these things, continuing 
with the only steady state and oe experiments i have given n number of examples to get you know the how to make the assignment based on the different uh, substituents in the phenyl group visio specificity and cistans confirmation all those things can be done in a selective experiment only thing you have to be very careful for frequency relative excitation how you do and simple molecule you can do you can't do this experiment on a big protein it is impossible to do that by without disturbing the neighboring peaks because spectrum will be very complex in such cases you have to do transient nvi by doing 2d noc i am showing this in simple molecules if a simple organic molecule if you are working with you don't have to spend time you can do the data acquisition faster by doing steady state nvi experiment with this i am going to stop with this nvi i'll go to a new topic now that's another one dimensional experiment and we will discuss that that is called one dimensional toxi experiment identical experiment similar to remember we discussed toxi experiment 2d toxi what do we do similar to cosi we apply 90 degree pulse and then mixing pulse in the transverse plane what is going to happen there chemical shifts are refocused j couplings are present and the spins lose their identity there won't be there are no chemical shifts when there is a hard one hand matching condition i told you there is a transfer of magnetization among all the coupled spins that is a taxi experiment and i showed you also the taxi experiment what happens it depends upon the mixing time and then the uh, magnetization has to traverse to all through the coupled spin system one after the other so it depends upon the time of the mixing time mixing period and also strength of the coupling both are important if the coupling strength is larger you will have a stronger peak and if this proton is very far away very weak and also far away but forms a part of the coupled spin system then also it takes you will see the, the thing but takes you know you have to uh, see that the cross peak intensity will be little less so this in, information is very important you can do this thing the uh, toxic cross peaks depends upon mixing time and also the strength of the coupling that we can do for a big molecule again a two dimensional experiment very simple molecule if you have why do you have to do the 2d experiment can you not do this data acquisition faster by doing a one dimensional experiment a selective experiment we can do that i will show you that now what do you do a selective excitation and a non selective excitation i think we already know that if you do not know the selective excitation means we can apply rf pulse so that only particular peak is excited that is detected all other peaks are suppressed that is the beauty of nmr see this is called application of a soft pulse for a sh you know uh, soft pulse means it is not sharp which is a, is a width is larger and then selectively you can have apply pulse so that only particular peak is excited all others are suppressed this is called selective excitation but this is non selective excitation we can do this by applying a hard pulse 90 degree pulse all the uh, you know spins all the protons which are in the entire range of chemical shift get excited that is a hard pulse non selective excitation this is non selective this is selective selective is always done by soft pulse this is what remember that with this we can do toxi in a different way what does one dimensional selective toxi does this is a cell remember in the toxi experiment we are going to apply hard pulse and then we, we have mixing and then vary t1 and then collect the signal that's okay but here we don't need a, we don't want to apply hard pulse we apply a selective pulse and a pulse which is shown with a shape like this means we are applying a selective pulse on a particular peak it could be frequency selective or band selective you can select over branch of frequencies or a single frequency doesn't matter this is called selective pulse whereas if you apply a pulse if you write a pulse like this any pulse sequence it is hard pulse please remember that so we can apply a selective 90 pulse here and then afterwards do the isotropic mixing start collecting the signal very simple experiment if you do this experiment you can do it faster for example i will apply a selective pulse to excite one of the peaks in the spectrum i then i apply a mixing pulse and a transfer of magnetization of this proton to other proton that are j coupled takes place as i told you depending upon the duration of the mixing and the strength of the coupling this is what is going to happen transfer is very efficient to the protons that are 
that is a large j coupling. I select particular proton let us say a with it is a large j coupling with b more than 10 50 let us say 15 hertz 15 hertz then transfer for this is more if it has coupled to other one let us say 1 hertz transfer to this is not efficient. Transfer to the other proton magnetization transfer is efficient only if the coupling is large with the selected proton that is what we should know alright. Last I mean the least efficient of the proton is that has a small j coupling and if they are not part of the coupled spin system there is no magnetization transfer this also we know that always in the 2D talks you also we discuss the magnetization transfer takes place among the protons that form the part of the coupled spin system if they are not coupled among themselves there is no transfer of magnetization we saw that we I showed you the you know a 4, 4 into 100 meter relay example where particular spin system only can get the uh, magnetization transfer like buttons transferring from only for a particular team members not for other teams of the different countries we saw that in one of the slides. So, intensity of the NOEP also depends upon the number of transfers and the efficiency of each transfer that depends upon magnitude of j I tell you ok. Sequential transfer of magnetization among coupled spins goes like this. So, at let us say I irradiate proton A selectively I, I excite this proton. Then let us say there is a j coupling between this and this there is a transfer of magnetization between this and this. Then this is coupled to this there is a transfer of magnetization this is coupled to this. So, sequentially it starts going one after the other. Supposing I, I give very small time and do not give enough time for the spins to propagate magnetization to propagate propagate you know it will not propagate completely then it will restrict only to this give more time it will propagate to this give further time it will propagate to this if they are from if they are among the coupled spin system. So, that is also very important this is how the polarization transfer takes place. So, we will see how we can do the selective taxi on particular molecule this is a molecule methyl alpha glucoside and we want to see can we use one dimensional toxic selectively and then selectively exit them and then keep on doing the isotropic mixing with a different time see how the magnetization get transferred systematically we can start the assignment we can do that and before that I want to give you one idea please remember always in such type of molecules like this sugar molecules and others glucose uh, axial axial coupling is larger always let us see 11 to 15 or 14 hertz like that axial equatorial is next that is 4 to 5 hertz and equatorial equatorial coupling is small this information is needed because sometimes if you want to identify let us say protons here both are a like have a geminal relationship and if you want to identify which is which then coupling information we can utilize because axial axial if there are uh, uh, axial axial relationship is there then you will see j coupling is larger from the separation we can assign that. So, this information just to keep, uh, tell you how we can go ahead, but since it is a glucoside molecule which I have taken methyl glucoside here you know alpha methyl, methyl alpha glucoside molecule these sugar generally are unbranched carbon chains they are not branched they assume they are all linear chain and most carbons are CHS generally. So, what do you call the you can assume them to be linear spin system because they are not branched if you remember the uh, structure of the sugar if you, you you would have seen C C C C would have written OH H H OH like that that is a structure of the sugar which we know how we used to learn in our college days. So, it can consider as a linear spin system unbranched in such spin system taxi mixing is like a diffusion process. That means, if I start with this it will come here it will come here it will come like that it diffuses one after the other like a diffusion process how it happens diffusion goes slowly from one place to another place like that this is what happens if I start a toxic in a sugar like molecule like this a linear chain let us say I am hitting proton A I am selectively exiting proton A then magnetization is start with A it immediately gives to B 
for a particular time if I give mixing it gives its magnetization to immediate coupled neighbor B I increase little more time it goes to B I am sorry from it goes to from A to actually A to B B to C it goes like this then it from A to C and then give more time A to B B to C and C to D and if you give enormous time it can go up to E. But if you give beyond that what will happen there is always remember in the talks I was telling you it is a cyclic process it keeps you know it oscillating magnetization goes forward and backward then it will come back. So, you should give optimum mixing time this is what happens. You may ask me a question why should I start to here what happens if I start with C proton C possible then magnetization initially first gives to it given to let us say B and D if I start with C it will give to B and D here give more time it will go to D and E A and E with longer mixing time the magnetization get transferred to other protons this is how polarization transfer takes place. Now, we will start with one experiment like this I am going to selectively excite this proton what is this proton if you see that this there are one O C A 3 is there this there are two spin systems for this one is C O C A 3 other is other system ok. I will start with irradiating one of them sorry ok and that is O C H 3 make assignment is made this is H 1. What is H 1 proton? See if I have to make the assignment of the sugar molecules always I start with the anomeric proton because anomeric proton comes between 4.5 to 5.5 ppm and is usually coupled to one single proton and will be a doublet and depending upon the coupling strength we can all even say alpha and beta isomer beta is a large coupling than alpha J coupling. So, I know there is only one peak is coming here doublet in the down field around 4.7 ppm that must be anomeric proton H 1 I will consume that and uh, I will start with that I will selectively irradiate proton H 1 and then mix do the mixing mixing time of 30 millisecond is given see what is happening there is enhancement for proton E and also O C A 3 O C A 3 is here. So, that is ok and I will uh, see the enhancement at both the places little bit of enhancement is there for H 3 also because it is see if you enhance it little bit more you can see this there is a small enhancement here not only O C A 3 and also little bit very close to that all right. So, magnification scale if you do and you can see and you may ask me a question why do not you see H peak to be H 2 because J coupling is very weak that is why I said we have to un understand the J coupling very important e axial axial J coupling is larger than equatorial equatorial that is what I told you ok. So, we will do it quickly same thing we do irradiate proton 1 instead of mixing time we give 30 seconds instead of 30 50 milliseconds see this is enhanced more because now it has transferred more to from H 1 to H 2 to H 3 it is going see it and then slowly you can see bit of magnetization to other proton also remember started with H 1 went to H 2 ok and then if you increase the mixing time enhance the signal intensity you can see little bit of magnetization to H 3 and for this one also H 4 also slowly it stands because I enhance the mixing time we can identify this in a different way you can selectively irradiate it proton 1 and I saw the enhancement here between 2 and 3. I selectively irradiate proton 2 then you see the enhancement in 3. I selectively irradiate now proton 3 you will see the enhancement at proton 4 and of course, 2 is also there because they are close by see 2 and 4 and also little bit weak you can see the enhance and intensity this could be proton 5 that you can confirm by hitting proton 4 then you will see the enhancement for proton 3 and 5 because they are next to each other and also small enhancement here to which is far away and it irradiate proton 5 you see enhancement of proton other two protons of course, 4 is there 3 is also there and there is also enhancement another 6 proton 6 proton 6 has two pro uh, this thing 
uh, there are two actually and A and B both you can see enhancement here. So, if we really plot on one of them you can see the enhancement in the other one H6 and H A and minute peaks enhancement for the 5 4 also same. This how selectively I irradiate the proton kept on increasing the you know mixing time and you see the propagation of the magnetization from one spin to other spin alternately selectively irradiate one of them and see how the magnetization is transferring. So, slowly step by step you can go keep irradiating one by one and see where the enhancement intensity you can make the complete assignment that is possible like this. So, with this I think I am going to time is up I am going to stop here. So, what I try to explain today is I started with uh, more examples on the one day difference in OE. We saw how difference in OE is going to help you in making the assignment few more examples we took and then afterwards uh, assignment at the particular peak in the final position everything we understood. Then I also told you it is possible all sorts of 2D experiment what we have 2D, Toxi, HSQC, COSI, NOSI everything can be done in a 1D way same 1D way, 1 dimension version is possible many of them ROSI, ROSI is also 1 dimension version is possible. But then it is not possible to do for a bigger molecule for a small molecule it is possible to do that that is what we saw that. So, I can I showed in the Toxi selective excitation of one of them and give a mixing time magnetization getting transferred to other protons increase the mixing time it goes to the x proton it depends upon the time of mixing mixing time and also strength of the coupling and alternately you go to different proton step by step every time you selectively exit one proton see where the magnetization and where the enhancement is there where the you know coupling by uh, transfer of magnetization there that peaks start coming up like that systematically you can go and make the assignment of all the proton in a simple one dimension way one dimension this is a one dimensional toxic this makes helps you in making assignment ok with this I am going to stop here well I think we have discussed enough in the next class I will continue with little bit of toxic and then another one or two different topics I will try to cover in I have uh, I think another one hour time two classes will be there maybe I will try to cover little bit more about dosi and if possible pure shift in the next two classes I will stop with this thank you very much. <laughs>